Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Alexander Kelly documentary live with yours truly, Alexander Kelly. In this documentary, all I'm going to discuss is the story behind Alexander Kelly. Who is Alexander Kelly? Uh, how I got into backyard wrestling, my backyard wrestling career, and what's currently happening now. So, I don't want to get into how I got into wrestling because that's kind of a long story. Plus, I was seven at the time, so it's kind of hard for me to remember. I am now 18. Um, so, we're just going to talk about how Alexander was born. So, Alexander Kelly... Also, please ignore my hair. I just got back from the store and it was raining, so obviously it's going to look ugly. Um, so Alexander Kelly was formerly known as Alexander Souls. For the people who watch RUW on a regular, you would know that. Um, Alexander Souls originally started as a WWE 2K superstar. Me and my friend Michael Boger started a 2K universe mode in both WWE. We started a universe mode in both WWE 2K19. And WWE 2K15. We did 19 first. So. Uh, we both won the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. In, w in WWE 2K15. Uh, we both won the Intercontinental Championship. The United States Championship. And together we won the WWE Tag Team Champions making us both Grand Slam champions in 2K15. In 2K19, Demon was the only one who became heavyweight champion. Uh, he became Intercontinental champion. I became United States champion. And together, we never became tag team champions. But that was because we were drafted to different brands. So 2K19 has a very different story than that of 2K15. But then, the championship that you see on the wall behind me, the coveted RUW World Heavyweight Championship. If you watch RUW on a regular, you will know the story of me receiving it in the mail. I'm going to go into that story. So, for the longest time, I wanted a replica... Sorry. So, for the longest time, I wanted a replica WWE championship of any kind, such as, I don't know if I can, such as that blue Universal Championship and this red one right here. But those ones are made of plastic. Those ones are the cheap $15, $20 ones. I wanted, like, a real replica championship, like one of those expensive $300, $400 championships. That was the one I wanted because I wanted a real legitimate one. Um, so I remember for weeks essentially begging my mother to allow me to buy a replica championship. And that was like early 2020 before RUW. Um, and at the time, like I knew how expensive they were, but at the time I was just kind of angry that my, all of my siblings got what they wanted and my mother got what she wanted, but I never got what I wanted. And all I wanted was a replica championship. Yeah, it was $300, $400, but at the time I didn't really, uh, notice how much that would deflate the bank account so it was kind of understandable why she said no but i remember one time she said no and i just had enough 
And um, I remember going off and then just leaving the house and just going for a walk just to kind of clear my head. And uh, I remember when I got back, I got a text message from, I want to say my sister on messenger my sister my older brother and my mother were all in my mother's room and they were just talking about like what i wanted the replica championship i got a text from my sister saying hey we need you in mom's room and i thought oh shit i'm gonna be in trouble because i went off and it just didn't really go well so i'm gonna be in massive trouble I got in there, wasn't in trouble at all. What they said was, we thought about what you said, but we found a cheaper option. I said, okay, I'm intrigued, show me. And what they showed me was something on Amazon where you can design your own championship. That was only $180. Um, it's th through a website, uh, called undis called Undisputed Belts, not sponsored, by the way. Um, I would like to say thank you, Undisputed Belts, for uh, you know, helping me through the process of designing the REW World Heavyweight Championship. But at the time of designing that championship, REW wasn't even a plan yet. I had no intention of making a, a backyard wrestling company or a wrestling company in general. I just wanted a championship. Just to look cool, I guess. Um, so I, well, here in my mouth. So I remember designing the championship, putting the text on the top. Hang on. I remember designing the championship. This championship is three years old, almost four. I remember designing the championship. I decided to make the plates of gold, as you can see, and the strap white, as you can see. Decided to put the text at the top. I don't know how well you can see that. Yeah, yeah, you can see that pretty good. Inaugural at the top and then at the bottom, Undisputed Champion. So that was the custom championship that I had designed for myself. Like I said, RUW wasn't even a plan at the top. So, I remember getting that championship in the mail about five days after customizing it. And uh, I originally was going to go for a walk that day. I went outside, saw a box, and I was like, the hell is that? Uh, picked up the box. I saw the logo on the side of it, the Undisputed Belts logo, and I was like, I know exactly what this is. Um, so I went inside, opened the box up. I was happy as hell. My own custom championship has just arrived. Um, I want to say it took about, I want to say a week or two before I had the idea of actually doing something with the championship. Um, so I contacted Michael and I said, listen, I got this custom championship in the mail, but I don't want it to sit and gather dust. What the hell do I do with this? It was actually him that had the idea of creating a, uh, a wrestling company with it. So I want to thank Michael for it. That is why I credit him as the co-founder because he kind of helped set the base for RUW. He helped me through the process of making it. Uh, the very first RUW logo, actually every RUW logo, was created by me. But I want to say he was kind of the foundation of making RUW because I told him I had that. So he said, why don't you do something with that championship? You've always wanted to be a wrestler, right? And I said, yeah, where are you going with this? You're kind of kind of making me excited. Um, he said, well, why don't you use that championship 
I make a wrestling company with it. And I was like, you're getting somewhere. Definitely getting somewhere. So I took his advice. Um, took his advice. Thought of a name. Made the logo. Sent it to him. Boom. Real Undisputed Wrestling was made. Um, after it was created, and that was set at, to be the world championship of RUW, I didn't really have an idea of how to get it out into the public eye. Because I didn't want to make a YouTube channel yet, because I know if I did, no one would watch it because it wasn't out in the public yet. The very first thing I did was advertise it on social media. I uh, m remember posting the logo, creating a group on Facebook, advertising live streams and stuff. And then I had the idea of creating a podcast for RUW. And that would kind of be my way of propelling it into the public eye. So, um, I downloaded an app called Anchor, which, by the way, is known as Spotify for podcasters now. Same app. Works the same way. Um, I created a, I created the podcast. At first, I titled it R.U.W. Russell Talk featuring Alexander Souls. Uh... I remember the very first episode I was talking about the tournament that I had planned. And I remember the very first thing I said on the first episode was, now I know what you might be thinking. Why are you making a podcast for RUW when RUW isn't even a thing yet? So that was the uh, RUW Russell Talk podcast was kind of my way of propelling RUW into the public eye, which worked surprisingly. Surprisingly, a handful of people listened to the podcast and uh, wanted me to do something with RUW. Lo and behold, the RUW YouTube channel was created. I am going to pull up the stats here and look at when the YouTube channel was created. If my phone remains to be glitchy as hell, that would be a problem. Okay, RUW was created on June 17th, 2020, a full month after the podcast was released. So, um, I did my first few episodes of the podcast. I remember doing a podcast with The Demon. At the time, we weren't rivals. The very first YouTube video that I uploaded to the RUW YouTube channel, the channel you are watching right now, was a world championship review. Kind of basically showing people that if I were to create a tournament for the title, that is what they are fighting for. The original plan for RUW... The original plan is what really got fans invested in the RUW was I was scheduled to make a tournament for the RUW World Heavyweight Championship that you see behind me. Um, that's what really got fans invested, and that's what kind of gave the demon the idea of joining RUW. Then he moved away, sadly. Um, I'm not going to get into it because he probably doesn't want me to get into it. But, um, yeah, he did move away, and that kind of made it hard for me. I'm, I'm like, ooh, that's not good. I'm going to need more people. I kept advertising RUW, and I'm like, I want to create a tournament. I need to get it out there into the public eye. So I did. I created an, an Instagram account for RUW a Twitter account for REW, which is pretty much dead right now. I don't really use X a lot, formerly known as Twitter. Um, and uh, remember the... I got 
as I got it more into the public eye, I've had more people text me intrigued in joining RUW. There was one guy whose wrestling name was Jay Kidd, who was actually, besides the demon, was one of the first people who contacted us about being interested in RUW. Now, you're probably wondering, who is Jay Kidd? We've never seen him. We've never heard of him. Who is he? Jay Kidd was a friend of mine that I had years ago. I'm talking 2015, 2016. I met him that long ago. Me and him were cool. Me and him were cool. He said he had wrestling gear. He was going to allow me to train him. We were cool. But then he started getting controversial. Every little thing that I posted on Facebook, whether it had to do with my religion, whether it had to do with my political views, he would laugh at and kind of mock. And that's what kind of shot down his chances of being in this company. Um, so Jay Kidd, unfortunately, was never a part of REW because he decided to be controversial and mock and laugh at every little political religious thing that I posted on my Facebook. So Jay Kidd is not a part of REW. Um, over time, it took about a month or two before I scrapped the whole tournament idea completely because I was like, fuck this. I'm not going to have enough people. So the tournament was canceled. And then that's when the demon issued a, a challenge to me. He said he wanted to face me in a match. So he issued a challenge on Messenger. And then that is where the very first promo for RUW was uploaded. Me accepting his, his challenge. Me showing him, not showing him, but me telling him what he is in store for when me and him collide. It's been three years and we still haven't had a match. That sucks. And it hits me where it hurts. And I hate it. Because me and him have been in a blood feud for three years. This is going to culminate eventually. I just hope it's sooner rather than later. But uh, the very first promo, I was telling him what he's in store for whenever me and him collide. Because I am a dangerous, hardcore, just bloodthirsty individual. Because I got most of my knowledge... From watching John Moxley DVDs. Um, I did grow up watching WWE, but like I said, I'm not really going to get into that because I discussed that so much. You already should know the story. Um, but then I started getting into hardcore wrestling and watching those John Moxley DVDs. And so, so Demon was in for a fight. He, he was going to bleed if me and him ever collided. Me and his rivalry spanned for three years and is still going on to this day at the timing of this recording. But then you had more people be introduced to Real Undisputed Wrestling, guys such as El Chapo, Ben Dover, Drake Danger, Mark Jones, and James Rasslin. James Rasslin was never introduced to RUW. Because he never really cut a promo. And I can't get into contact with him. Because he shut down his Instagram account. So. Over time. RUW just kept getting more popular with fans. Which is what I wanted. Which is what I loved. And at the timing of this recording. We stand at 76 subscribers. Which is amazing. Um, so. As RUW kept getting more popular with the fans, I knew I had to do something. We're going to go back in time a little bit to April of 2020. No. April of 2021. I decided if I was going to make a name for myself, if I was going to make a name for RUW, I had to do something. That is when I put 
the RUW World Heavyweight Championship on my shoulders and made myself the very first RUW World Heavyweight Champion. This is a documentary where I go behind the scenes. Honestly, a decision I didn't like. I look back at it now. I hate even having to do that. I hate having to put the championship on me without winning it fair and square. So that is a decision I regret doing, and I apologize for it. But the fans honestly loved it. There were a handful of people who said that I didn't earn it fairly, which they were correct. I didn't. But um, I saw it as me kind of being the hardest working guy in RUW at the time. So I thought me crowning myself RUW World Heavyweight Champion kind of made sense. Um, but like I said, it is a decision I regret making. But I remember in like mid-2021, I issued a challenge saying I need more people in RUW. I need people to challenge me for this championship. I need people willing to put the work in and show me that they have what it takes to be in RUW. And that is where two men stepped into the company. Ben Dover and El Chapo. Two people I regret letting in RUW. Um, honestly, because all they did was make a mockery of things and a joke of things. I didn't really realize that at the time, because at the time I was fucking desperate for people. So I just kind of let them in and let them do whatever they wanted to do. El Chavo only cut one promo. Ben only cut like three or four. Um, over time, I realized it wasn't the greatest idea. So they were released. Then shortly after that is where Alexander Souls was truly introduced to the backyard wrestling scene. He got into contact with a man named Chris, which you all know as Chris Nitro. Got into contact with him. And after the first conversation... Alexander Souls was signed to WBF Wrestling, set to train in September of 2021. Well, I did. I went, trained, kind of had the character idea of the revolution, Alexander Souls. So uh, my debut match, October 27th, 2021, Alexander Souls was introduced to the world of backyard wrestling, winning a gauntlet match and defeating Destroyer in mere seconds to earn a championship opportunity for Destroyer's Intercontinental Championship at WEF Showdown. The feud between me and Destroyer, I loved because I, there's something about that feud. There's something about the way it was set up. There's something about the way we connect in the ring. The chemistry between me and him is... E How the fuck do you say that word? The chemistry between me and him is immaculate. I think that's how you say it. Um, absolutely outstanding destroyer. One hell of a performer who I have the utmost respect for. Destroyer, <laughs> props to you, my guy. Uh, mine and his match at WEF Showdown is what really culminated the rivalry. Um, me and him for the Intercontinental Championship, I'd have to say the best match so far in my backyard wrestling career. Uh, I owe it to him, and he owes it to me. We both made each other look like a million bucks, and that is really what matters when you're in the ring with somebody you have to make each other look good. Um, so I really thank Destroyer for that Intercontinental Championship match at Showdown. Um, so, yeah, the feud between me and Destroyer 
really got Alexander Souls introduced to the world of backyard wrestling, and I thank Destroyer for that. Then we talk about my run with TBW. Not the best match I've had. Could have been a lot better, but that's just because the dude I was wrestling refused to allow me to do moves, refused to just let me be me in that ring, essentially. Um, so I blame Lumberjack, who was my opponent. For the longest time, he would never let me practice moves that I learned on YouTube. And um, he would never let me practice submissions. He would never let me practice moves that any of the other guys were doing, which means I only had a limited move set. And people blame me for being a bad wrestler because of that. Like, I hate to say it, I know my matches weren't good. The best match I had was the one with Destroyer. And like I said, I thank him for that. Um, I understand that the matches that I had in Backyard Wrestling so far are not the best, aside from the one that I had with Destroyer at Showdown. Um, but that's just because I had a limited move set because of him. He would never let me practice anything. It was always his fault. So if we ever end up working together again in wrestling, whether it be backyard wrestling, pro. I don't want to have a match with him, like, ever again, because he just kind of ruins the mood for me. Um, he was the reason that I took a mental health break in late 2021. No, I'm thinking of the wrong time frame. He was the reason that I took a mental health break in... Mid-2022, but I'm going to get to that when I get to that. So, Alexander Souls was introduced to the world of backyard wrestling, all thanks to WBF. And the few that he had with Destroyer really set the world on fire when it came to what Alexander can do on the mic and in the ring. But his run in TBW is where things really didn't go to plan For his backyard wrestling career, if you want to put it that way. So, Alexander Kelly was set to have a match with Lumberjack in the TBW Backyard Welterweight Tournament. We have Taft Taylor saying, hey, buddy, what's up? How's it going, my man? I uh, hope it's going pretty good. It's going pretty good for me right now. Just decided I'd do this little documentary because, you know, why not? Uh, it's, it's going pretty good. How's, how's it going? Um, but as I was saying, Alexand the Revolution Alexander Souls was set to have a match with Lumberjack in the TBW Backyard Welterweight Tournament to crown the very first welterweight champion in TBW. Obviously, I was not set to win, but that match that I had with Lumberjack really could have gone a lot better had he not been an asshole. But aside from him, the sole reason I left Tennessee Backyard Wrestling was Russell Cooper. Because his whole attitude uh, throughout the thing. Um, Taff. Hang on, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up his comment. He said, "Send me a link. I'd like to chat about TBW with you for a few, if you want." Um, we can, if us chatting about TBW is the TBW portion of the the documentary. So, um, I'm gonna connect my Bluetooth keyboard to my phone and text you because my phone is glitchy and it's almost like really hard to type. Oh my God. Turn Bluetooth on.
Turn Bluetooth on. Okay, I turned Bluetooth on. Are you connected? Oh my god, open Bluetooth. Okay, yeah, you're connected. Open Instagram. I have a message request that I'm not going to answer. All right. I am sending you the link right now. Let me type it. All right, I sent you the link on Instagram. Oh my God. Yep, my phone is being glitchy as all hell right now. All right, I sent you the link on Instagram. This will be the TBW portion of the, the documentary. We are going to go in depth with my experience with TBW. Um, we're just waiting for James Taylor to get in here. And then we will discuss my experience with Tennessee Backyard Wrestling. Also, for those watching... Uh, if you have any questions before James Taylor gets in here, please leave them in the comments. But yeah, as I was saying, the main reason I left TBW was because of Russell Cooper. And we have James Taylor in here right now. Welcome to the Alexander Kelly documentary. <laughs> James Taylor. How you doing, kid? You doing all right? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? Oh, I'm making it, man. I'm just staying busy doing what I do what I love to do. Let's entertain. Yeah, yeah. I feel that. All right. So what what is this? You got a documentary going on? Yeah, I got the Alexander Kelly documentary. Like what made Alexander Kelly his experience in backyard wrestling up to this point. Uh, what his career was like, and right now I'm discussing the experience that I had in Tennessee Backyard Wrestling. Okay. Cool deal. Um, I watched that day. Uh, I actually watched it. I saw your match with Lumberjack. Uh, if that's what you want to talk about as far as the politics and stuff. I mean, we can get into that if you want to know. It's up to you. But uh, I heard you say something about Russell Cooper. Mm -hmm. You know, and he could be a, a little bit of a stickler. I get that. Um, yeah. <laughs> your match with Lumberjack, you know, I watched your your last match with WEF. Maybe I don't, I'm not trying to jump the gun, but it, it deals with the same guy. I know that's Lumberjack underneath. Yeah. And it seems like, like he was trying to work with you, but at the same time, at least in TBW, your match looked great. I mean... Well, before I say anything, how would you like me to talk about it? You want me to be straight shooter, or do you want me to just give my honest opinion, or is there any questions you want to ask me of what I thought, or what? What, what do you? What would you like me to say, Mister Kelly? Because this is I want your show. I want your opinion on the match. You can say whatever you want about that match, like honest opinion. What was your opinion of that match? 
Um, so the match that I had with Lumberjack on TBW could have gone a lot better, in my opinion, had it not been for him kind of refusing me, uh, refusing to allow me to practice moves that I wanted to practice. Because I feel like for the longest time since my WEF career started to where it ended, he like kind of never really allowed me to practice moves that I never wanted to practice, such as submissions. Uh, some of the moves that the other guys were doing. Um, and I just kind of had a limited move set because of that. So yeah, my match with him could have gone a lot better had it not been for that. Understandable. So in a way, you kind of respectfully putting it on the fact that he didn't give you enough time to train. You just, y'all just both kind of went in there and just went with what you could do at the time. Right. Yes. Yeah, you know, and that's not your fault. That was more of the people who should be training you the right way. That's their fault. That's on them. It ain't on you. You went in there because you were just living your life and living, doing what you love to do. You love professional wrestling. I see the yeah. heart in you. And I've said that since day one, since I met you, you know, and I believe that, but the match was, I'm going to be sh straight up. And again, Remember, this ain't your fault. And this to all the people watching your documentary that know you. You're a good yeah. kid. You're real green. You got a lot to learn. But mm -hmm. you went in there with a guy who you trusted, mind you. He did what he could to carry you. But just like you said, he should have trained you more. He should have shown you more. He should have gave you some pointers. Anybody that was there at TBW should have gave you some pointers. If I was there... I would have made it happen. Everybody's yeah. different. Everybody reacts differently. But every time I ever show up to any place, whether it's TVW or any other place, I do 100% believe that I need to train, even if I'm knocking some ring rust off. Like, I haven't been in the ring probably in about two months right now. And every time I go more than a month without being in the ring, I got ring rust already. I know what I'm yeah, doing, yeah. but when I go – when, when what it means by ring rust is I can go and take a bump like I did in a normal match, but it will hurt me the first few times. It'll be like, oh, uh, and yeah, so until I get it, it. it'll it'll hurt more the more time you take off. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Everywhere and says that. That's that's just part of it. It's just the nature of the business. Yeah. Oh, um, unfortunately, you know it is what it is. I think you should have uh, had more of an opportunity after that. They should have gave yeah. you more of the green light. Getting injured is one thing. I know your story a little bit. Of I, I keep up with you. I keep up with a lot of guys that I see that have um, – I'm a believer in, a, in anybody that's got the passion for it. It don't matter what size you are, how big you are, how small you are, how strong, how fat, how skinny, whatever it is, a wrestler can only really get over in the business if he's got the passion and the heart for it. And yeah, I think – I can tell you without brown nosing that you, you've you got the heart and the passion for it. You're always talking about wrestling. You're always posting wrestling stuff. I know mm -hmm. that you got it in your heart. And because of that, guys like the WEF crew and the TBW crew should have been able to be there for you and extend their hand and say, you want some help? Let's help you. And there you go. Exactly. That's just I feel the same way. I believe that, like, whenever I was, you know, I'm no longer with TBW, right? Yeah, I did. I did hear about that. So I believe whenever I was with TBW, every time I showed up and I would start practicing, mm -hmm. very select few people would want to get in the ring and start training with me. Those are the type of people that I knew had the heart for. It. And I believe if you were there, you'd be one of those guys that'd be like, Hey, James is here. I want to get in there and start praying, training, you know, and practicing. Yeah. I think so. Would you, you think, or what? Yeah, definitely. So you see, I, I mean, I have the heart and passion. Like it, I don't care who it is. Anyone want to train me? Give me in the room. There you go. There you go. Never say never though. Anything can happen. Um, as far as like me and TBW, you know, it, I, it's not about that right now. This is your documentary. So uh, what what else would you like to know or um, 
I don't know what all I'm allowed to say and talk about. And... You can say anything. I'm allowing anything and everything. Well, this is your documentary, you know. <laughs> um, so the documentary is essentially about my time as a backyard wrestler, whether it be on camera, behind the camera, behind the scenes, anything like that. What was going on in my head? What was going on with my career? What I thought about certain things? Mm-hmm. That's essentially what this whole documentary is. What would you say your favorite match was in your career so far? And don't say okay. that your career is over, but you know, yeah, yeah, leading up to this point. Um, so I mentioned it a few minutes ago before you entered. Um, my favorite match has to be the match that I had with Destroyer at Showdown of 2021. Okay. The Intercontinental Championship match, the way me and him kind of carried each other in the match is what really made that match stand out from the rest of the card. So uh, I'd have to say the match with Destroyer is my most favorite. I'd have to say my second favorite is the match that I had later in the show, the tag team match that I had where I teamed up with Max Chaos to take on Andy Omega and Tranquilizer. That is my second favorite. So those two matches, I think, really stand out in my career because it shows how well I can do with guys like Destroyer, Andy Omega, and Tranquilizer. The tougher, the better, I think. True. But you got to think about it, too. Are these guys still in the business, or are they they're officially done, right? Well, Andy and Tranquilizer, yeah. Destroyer still wants to do it. But ever since WEF shut down, both me and him have kind of been in the same boat. We haven't found a company to go to. Um, Why hasn't he tried to go to TBW? I don't know. I'm guessing the same reason as me, that being like transportation or something. But um, I, I don't know. I don't really know his side of things. But I do know Max Chaos. He's still in TBW. Yeah. Max Chaos. I did what I could for him to put him over and make him look good in my match with him. Did you see my match with him? I did. Great match. I, that's uh, one of the things I do in this business whenever I can is to put people over. Even if I came out the victor, like I said before, a hundred times already, I did maybe six or seven moves in that whole match. I let him get all the offense in and I sold my ass off for him to make him look like a million bucks. And, Despite winning, everything that led up, without saying a whole bunch, to what has happened over the past month and me no longer being with the company, of all people, I didn't expect him to disrespect me like he did, but that's another story. He disrespected me after what I did for him. That's a shame, man. You work so hard with him, and he just does that. Yeah. Well, I thought everything was fine, and everything was, but because of uh, the – disagreements with my contract and all that shit with the uh, TBW between me and two other individuals, not the company itself, not, not the roster, me and them, everything's good. But me and these two individuals who run the company, we couldn't come to an agreement with uh, a certain storyline. So I, we decided to part ways he decided he wanted to disrespect me. And uh, so now I've got an issue with him. Not really an issue, but it's more like a, I don't like him no more. I don't respect him, especially after that. I get that. Totally yeah. understandable. I, I did what I did for him in that match. Even though I knew I was going to win and I was supposed to win for purposes, story purposes, I mean, I could have just beat the dog shit out of him and been done with it. But I <laughs> wanted to make him. I wanted to make him stand out and give him probably the best match he's ever had. Even in a losing effort, it was the best match he's ever done still to this day. And because of that, that's why he's going in the direction he's going now. But the Mm -hmm. funny thing is, is a guy like that can't put on a quality matchup because nobody's going to sell for him the way that I did or the way that I would for anybody. I would do it for you. I would do it for, I did it for profit. I would do it for Gage Flair. I would do it for, I'd do it for Austin Theory. I would do it for The Rock. It don't matter who the hell it is. I would sell the same way to make them look like they're doing what they're supposed to do. 
yeah, that, that's all that matters when you're in the ring with somebody. Make each other look like a million bucks. Sell your ass off. Make each other look good. That's what matters when you're in the ring with some with somebody. Yep. But that uh <laughs> in the backyard world, dude, the backyard world 20 years ago, I know it sounds really old, but the backyard industry 20 years ago was so much more fun than it is today. Today is all yeah. about politics. There's politics in indie wrestling. There's politics in the wrestling world like WWE and AEW. That's a given. That's normal. That's a business. They're making money. So politics is a thing. I get it for certain things to make sense because of what's really selling tickets and all that shit. But in the backyard world, do we really need a guy to be running around doing the Roman Reigns story to put himself over when really that's the only clout he's got? is the fact that he is who he is in TBW. But he, he's not uh, in any other company. He doesn't go to any other company. Anyways, <laughs> that's another thing. <laughs> yeah, I think I know who you're talking about, too. But anyways, I wanted to come on here, say a little bit of something, because you talked about TBW. If you want to say something with Russell Cooper, I mean, I like the guy, but he can. Uh, he's very defensive when it comes to tbw a lot of these guys are very protective of tbw respectfully i get it but um one thing he'll never do that nobody will ever do is question me when you get to that moment in your career where nobody can question you or tell you what to do they come to you instead for guidance that's when you know you've made it in my opinion not to not to clout or not to boast but you be it. If I was you, how about let's ask this question, and I'll pretend you're asking me. If I was Alexander Kelly, your age right now, your step in your career and what you're doing, mm -hmm. I would be training even at home. I never went to a gym to work out. I'm going to tell everybody to the world right now. I'm strong. I am athletic. I've got a little bit of a belly, but that's because of, you know, the diet that I've had, but I've been making things and adjustments to make it better. But I've always had my strength and my ability to do what I do. I worked out at home. I did push-ups at home. I would just sit and run in place while I'm watching wrestling promos. Literally, I would watch like WrestleMania 17's Stone Cold versus The Rock, the My Way. You know, that big video package promo. It's about three and a half, yeah. four minutes long. I would watch that three times in a row and work out until my arms were about to fall off. And I do that almost every other day um, or every day that I would, would watch it because when I'm watching it, I'm pumped. So I want to do something because I want to do it. I, I run and jog in place. I did jumping jacks. I didn't have to go to the gym and I do what I would do. And that's why I'm picking up, like you've seen in videos, 350 pound guys and slamming them. I don't have to do that. But if I was you, I would train at home, just do little things. Do The biggest thing is cardio. You don't have to be the strongest guy on the block. Just cardio. The reason cardio is such a big thing is because when you're in that ring and you're running, if you don't blow up, and blow up means run out of gas and start, going, you know, breathing heavy, then you're going to be fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. Number two thing I would do if I was you, Mr. Kelly, if I was Alexander Kelly, I would be practicing promos all the time. Oh, I, I do that practice. often. I do that very Good. often. Because that is your number one winner in professional wrestling, backyard wrestling, whatever it is, is your mouth, your mouthpiece. If you can the amount, talk, if you the can amount talk, of you're good. voice messages that I have on my phone of me just practicing promos is unbelievable. I do that quite often. Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and cut a promo? No. Should I try that? Yes, because not only are you giving a promo, but you're watching yourself and you can work on your facial expressions and how you want to have your demeanor look. I mean, who is Alexander Kelly? Are you more of a demented type? Are you uh, a face? Are you a heel? It's a matter of discovering yourself, 
by looking at yourself in the camera or the mirror. The old days when we didn't have a camera to just play around or a phone to play around. I know it sound old when I do this. I would look in the mirror. I would look in the mirror and just talk trash to myself, you know, and just just work on my facial expressions while I'm talking to see what works out. And I was very photogenic back then. Now I'm just kind of whatever because I've always got, I've got the camera and also because I've had that practice. But if I was you, I would practice in the bathroom or wherever you got a mirror. Cut a promo on yourself. Just talk. Talk trash. Or do the camera. Get a camera. Get your phone, your laptop, whatever. Record yourself doing a promo. Go on TikTok, actually. You should join the wrestling promo community and talk you trash. You should get me into that. I've got a link, and I can send you a link. All you need is a Discord channel and a TikTok. And if you could get those, I have um, both. If, okay, then we should we should we should link up on that for sure later after this broadcast or anytime tomorrow. I could give you more details. But I run Promo Wrestling Federation, and I help guys learn how to do promos and just do them to do them. And you could talk trash with other people. It's another way to get your name out there. Even if you're not really in the ring and it's fun and trust me that we got rules that are set in place, standards that make it right. And I would explain all that to you and I could do that at another time or whenever. But if you're very interested in that, that's another thing that I would do. If I was Alexander Kelly, I'd get in the promo wrestling game and start talking trash and just start having fun and meeting new people because uh, there's a lot of people out there that, they do it just to do it for fun because they can't really get in the ring or they are kind of like you, they don't have transportation to get somewhere. They might not have the money. They, they might not They're uh, they self doubt themselves. Like, Oh, I, I probably could do it, but I'm really scared. You know, I just want to talk. Okay. That's fun. It's not for everybody, but the wrestling talking part, just talking and cutting promos. A lot of people find that just fun. So that would be a good way to practice for you. And uh, thirdly, if I was Alexander Kelly, I would do what I could to save up the money that I can while I'm training, while I'm talking and practicing and get yourself a vehicle. And when you get yourself that vehicle, then start venturing out to companies. Hey, I'm willing to come there. Would you be willing to train me and let me try out, you know, like TBW or wherever you would want to go? I'm not going to tell you because I'm not there right now. I'm not going to tell you not to go to TBW. By all means, go. Just uh, be careful with uh, what they pitched you. Well, in, in your case, though, it wouldn't matter. The only thing I would want to do is get in the ring and start learning. It doesn't matter what type of match it is. Yeah. I don't care. I, it's same with me. I wouldn't care if I was losing every match. The fact is, is I'm getting in there. I'm getting experience. I'm getting to take bumps. I'm getting to learn how to sell. I'm getting to learn how to do certain moves. Because when you learn it that day, you go back and watch your camera. You watch your match. I'm sure you've watched your own matches a dozen times. I do it a lot. I watch my matches a lot, too. In a way, it's a good student of the game type theory because you can watch how you do something, right? And you can mm -hmm. be like, you know, like my stunner. My stunner wasn't always as good as I always had it. But I would watch how I would do, whether it be a suplex, scoop slam, a stunner, a pedic, whatever it is, I did. I'd watch back in the old days on the trampoline, and I'd be like, that was cool, but I want it to look this way. What can I do to make it look better? And then I'd go watch a match where I know a move is that I want to practice, and I'd watch that match over and over to learn how to do it. The reason I do the stunner the way I do is to do it just like Stone Cold Steve Austin. And that was way before Kevin Owens came around. That was way before anybody else, before John Cena did the springboard stunner. Everybody before that, it was just Austin doing the stunner, the kick and the jump and the arch. And my goal was to mimic that. If I could pull it off, you can ask people around whether they admit it or not. 100% of them will admit it. I've got the best stunner in the backyard world today. My stunner is even better than Kevin Owens. Yeah, because I love doing it. It's fun. And my goal is to make it look as great as Austin did it because everybody loved that move. You should do that, too. And I already see that you're doing it. Be a student of the game. Watch matches all the time. Critique yourself. 
hey, I did that in this match. You know what I'm going to do in my next match? I'm going to do the same move again, but I'm going to do it better. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But that, those are the things I would do if I was you and in your shoes right now. Especially, I mean, I don't know your personal life. That's none of my business. You don't have to share that with the world. But you look like you've got a really good set of a, a living style where you don't have too much on your plate. And you can focus on what you want to do with your career and your hobbies. You know what I mean? Yeah. See me, I've got a wife. I've got, I don't have two kids. I have two cats that are like my kids. Oh, I've got a job I got to go to every day. I've got uh, three YouTube channels that I'm managing. I've got my TikTok page I'm managing. You know, I've got a lot going on. But if I was, when I was in your spot, Cause I was in your spot. Mm-hmm. I grew up, I grew up uh, with a single mother. I grew up uh, in a trailer. I walked everywhere. I went when I got a job, when I got a job, I walked there all the time. Um, mm-hmm. And I did what I could to save the little money I can. My minimum wage was five fifteen back then God. an hour, which sucked. <laughs> I thought a 300, yeah. $80 paycheck was like rich money. I felt good. I was like, hell yeah. But then I, you know, blow it on stupid shit because I'm an idiot. Uh, but still, that walking, as much as it sucks, it's actually one of the best exercises you can do. Mm-hmm. And that's actually one of the reasons why I got in the best shape that I did back in that time. When I was 20 years old, dude, I was in the best shape of my life but in a way i think i'm in better shape now than i was then even though i have a little bit of a pudge on my stomach i'm fine everywhere else i got my muscle I'm stronger than i've ever been but back then i like the way i looked better maybe i don't know but if i was you yeah dude i would just take what you got learn it you got more resources now you got somebody like me i'm willing to extend the olive branch to you and say look I can help guide you in the right direction, but it's up to you to go through those doors and walk through them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But there it is. Uh, Do you have any questions for me in this documentary? (sighs) What's the next step for Alexander Kelly? Surely your career is not over yet. I wish I knew the answer to that question. Where do you see yourself in five years in the wrestling business? Where would you, okay, make it easier. Where would you like to see yourself in five years? Pro. Pro already? Like indie pro? Right? Yeah. In the, in the indie scene, starting to go pro, pro, get your wrestling license and be classified as a professional wrestler? Yeah, starting to get noticed by big companies, stuff like that. Okay. You could make that happen. It's just a matter of you believing in yourself to do it. Yeah. You know the, how old are you? I'm 18. Oh, you're 18. Okay. Well, let me tell you something. Me at 18, uh, I was wrestling in a backyard with a, a garden hose wrapped around two trees and a telephone pole. And wrestling on the ground and sometimes on a trampoline. And um, I didn't have the resources that there are today. You've got YouTube, you got Instagram, you got TikTok, you got Twitter, you got Facebook, you got all that stuff. In a way, what I would do if I was you, there we go, I would use this resource like YouTube to constantly throw your name out there. And if you join the my promo wrestling thing and you do that, that is one way to get you noticed because you'll be on Instagram or you'll be on TikTok, and now you'll do promos every day or every other day when you cut a promo with somebody telling a story. Mm-hmm. And then that's going to get your name out there more and more. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's a good way to get you started. Back then, I didn't have none like that. It was just a video camera and me. And we get what they called VHS tapes. This is one of my wrestling matches that I haven't got on my YouTube yet. And I'm getting, I'm waiting for my new uh, thing to come in from Amazon to port it to my computer so I can start port, putting all my matches on there. I've got all my old tapes down there. I've got a, probably like 20 or so matches on tape right there on video that I still have not shown the world yet because I can't get it on there. <laughs>
Man, okay. if I could if I could figure out how to like get my matches on like DVD or something, that'd be cool. That that's easy. But what I would do with you, DVD is one thing. But what you could do, go get you some, go get you a flash drive or two. Do you have any flash drives? Uh, no, I do not. Go. To, you got a Walmart near you or anything like that? I do. When you get some money, if you have any, use it. But they're not they're they're not expensive. They can be cheap. Get you like an eight gig or a sixteen gig um, flash drive from Walmart. Do you have a laptop? Unfortunately, I do not. Do you do everything off your phone? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any friends or anything that have a laptop or a computer? Um, not nearby. No. Okay. Well. The power of YouTube strong. It'll stay on there forever. But yeah. when you do get one of those, a laptop or a computer, gets you a flash drive. And then what you do is you'll download your video to an MP4 file. That's real simple. I can show you how to do that unless you already know how to do that. But you download it to an MP4 file and you put it on your flash drive. And then you can use that flash drive everywhere. It's like a DVD player, only it's a flash drive. You can put it in your Xbox. You can put it in a PlayStation. You can watch it that way. You can take it to anybody's that has a USB port and pop that flash drive in and pull up the media file and play it. Um, you can even burn it. If you get a PC, you can burn that file to a DVD if you feel like doing so later on. So there you go. Mm -hmm. That's pretty simple. Pretty cool. Me, the only reason I'm wanting to get these off my VHS, was well, not really get them off, but port them from the VHS to digital, is because VHSs, unfortunately, they, these are still holding up now. Very old. I know you, you probably, I don't know if you've ever seen one in person or have. No, I have. But, but um, these, uh, these will eventually deteriorate over time, and it makes them. Yeah, they, they don't really make those anymore, do they? No, they don't, they don't make video cassettes anymore. And uh, this was how we recorded our matches back in the day. I got like a whole pistol on my computer table. <laughs> well, anyways, but yeah, that, that's it. So surely your career is not over. You see yourself pro in about five years. I believe it can happen if you put the work in and you you could use the, this power of social media to make your name. I will say this, though. I did get into contact with a pro company. And if you want me to go in depth with that, I can. Go ahead. So um, the 1st of September, the 1st of this month, um, a locally based professional wrestling company had a show in downtown Barberville where I live. Um, it was free admission. You could go as long as you had your own chair or got a seat on the bleachers. I had neither, but thankfully they allowed me to sit like up close to where the barricade was and I was able to like high five the wrestlers. I even got a picture of me with one of the guys. But during intermission for the show, I went to go get a cotton candy with the last dollar that I had in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And then someone that I knew from my childhood who I used to go to church with was running concessions. And her son-in-law was the one who ran the company. So I asked her if there is some way I could get into the company but not actually wrestle. Because I kind of want to put my hands on something that's involved in the wrestling world but not wrestling. So she called Mike over, the guy, the owner of the company. And uh, I talked to him and he said to uh, talk to him after the show. So after the intermission, we only had like two more matches left and I waited until the show was over. Uh, they actually let people into the ring after the show, which I thought was cool. You know, it brought back that nostalgia of being in the ring. I'm like, I miss this feeling, man. So I talked to him after the show and I said, how much would it be to train to be a referee? And he said, oh, referee training is only $30 a session. And after about three or four sessions, we'll have you start refereeing matches. That's only $90 to $120. Not that, not that expensive at all. So I feel like I might use my next paycheck. I'm going to contact him. Hopefully he can give me a ride to wherever they do the training at. 
and you could see your boy as a referee. And I'm Dude, you that's that's a strong connection already. And you don't have to be scared to ask if you want to be a pro either, because yeah. he'll tell you a price. Like I'm going to New South Pro Wrestling, which is here in Alabama, actually. And mm -hmm. um, New South Pro Wrestling is an indie company. If you haven't seen them, I'll send you a link. And Austin Theory was there. Uh, Dawshin from AEW has been there many times. And they have connections with the NWA, the National Wrestling Alliance. Ooh, they, have nice. they have connections with Ring of Honor, which is associated with AEW. Yeah. And their world champion is a female named uh, Kenzie Page, and she's the women's champion in NWA. She's the world champion for New South, and she's the women's champion for the National Wrestling Alliance. They, cool. they tie together. It's really neat. And they told me it's $500 to get in and then just to do a tryout match and practice. And however long I need training, it's a hundred dollars a month after that until they feel I'm ready, but they've already seen my stuff and they know what I'm about. So literally all I have to do is just go to a show, pay 500 bucks, do a tryout match. And they'll, they might book me starting the next month because I already got the date set. I'm going September 29th it's on a Saturday. I'm going to New South to start training, and I hopefully I'm getting – hopefully by next month, if not November, I'll be booked on one of their shows and have my first few matches there. That'd be cool. You so, going pro. Yeah, and that's that's my that's my plan. That's what I'm wanting to do. That's also one reason why I've been having this situation with TBW is because I already had this set in stone because they contacted me, and I reached out to them, and we had a big conversation, and it's fun. So I'm excited about it. Um, plus, I'll get paid, so that's going to be great. Um, yeah. But you having something like that, that's a big – dude, forget the backyard wrestling then at this point. You should just focus on promo work, doing the promo wrestling thing to get you more practice. Go in. Hell, if you want to do that, though, start as a referee because it's always good to learn everything. Start as a referee and they teach you everything, then that means when you're ready to – wrestle you could say look i've been doing the referee thing i got it down i want to actually wrestle yeah you, you might get more of a discount because you're already in the company and they might just start training you you know what i mean i'm mm -hmm. sure they would train you because you know, I, I, I plan you. on using the referee stuff as like a stepping stone to get in the pro that's like a, that's smart step into the ring oh yeah that's a smart tactic. I would do that if I were you. The next check uh, or two, dude, shoot, do it. I, I appreciate I, I, the I, advice, my man. Do it. Hell yeah, do it. That's what I would do if I was you. Screw the backyard wrestling I'm, shit. You I'm already got something local. Doing. That's already better than any backyard thing. Don't yeah, because they're, they're based in Corbin and Barberville. Corbin is just like the next city over. What's the name of the company? Uh, Traditional Southern Wrestling. TSW. Yeah. Not bad. Uh, they don't have like an official YouTube channel, but one of their wrestlers named the Super Assassin has a YouTube channel where he uploads like matches and clips. They have a website, which is TSWrestling.com. Uh, I never was able to get the website to load for me, but if it loads for you, that's incredible. Uh, be sure to check them out. They have a, they have a Facebook uh, just search up traditional Southern wrestling, and it's like the first one that'll pop up. Nice. So, uh, nice. Yeah, be well, sure to check them out. Well, dude, definitely check you. Best of luck to you. I hope that you get it. And if you get it, dude, you ain't got nothing to worry about. But if you want to work on the promo game too to help you along the way, let me know, and I'll send you. You got a Discord, you said, right? Yeah, I have you on Discord, I believe. Okay. Then we need to get back on there and connect and later on or whenever I'm free all day tomorrow too. And um, I could tell you what we're about and what, what to do and have you do a tryout promo on TikTok. It's not to try out to come in. I'll let you come in the company and we'll just have fun. You don't have to be the best promo artist. You just have to, you believe in yourself and have the character and you have fun. You already have a character. You already established that. So you're fine. 
it's just a matter on do you want to do a promo? Do you want to talk trash with somebody? Because I could put you against anybody and have you just cut a yeah. promo on them. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, we'll, we'll get together on that and uh, we'll talk about that. But cool. Good deal. All right. You got any other questions for me? Or And I'm kudos on the documentary. Um, I'm actually working on a documentary myself. I'm not doing a stream about it. Important clips to make an actual like backyard documentary for me since my backyard career is basically done. Is there a certain backyard wrestling company that you would like to see me in? I I guess I'd see TBW. You know, I, I, because I have the sour taste in my mouth with TBW right now. I don't really want to watch their product, but there are a few people there that I support that I will watch their matches. So to see you do something there, that'd be fun. Uh, if there's other companies that are near you, that's closer then yeah, anything. It doesn't matter what it is. It's just a matter of seeing you get in the ring and see you hone your craft to keep going. One thing to keep in mind, do not be afraid when you go to any indie company, because I've already verified it with new South new South has almost, 4,000 subscribers, but they're aware of my 40,000 followers I got on uh, on YouTube and my 35 on my TikTok. They know I've got a large following. They're actually excited about that. And I yeah. said, well, is it okay when I start coming to train, can I document my own training with my camera and have somebody record me while I'm doc like practicing? They said, absolutely, 100%, you could do that. I said, great. They said, if you get booked, though, say in the future, I get booked for a match, and I, re I can record the match with my phone as well. I can have somebody record the match even before they air it. I just am not allowed to post it until after they post theirs. And Makes I said, that's sense. fine. That's fine with me. Shoot. Yeah. As long as, yeah. But as far as documenting my journey, that's something you should do, too. I would recommend, if you, even if you're doing referee stuff, ask. If you ask for permission to have somebody record your sessions while you train, um, while you're doing a match, you know, if you want, I would ask for that. And uh, more than likely, I'm pretty sure they'd be cool with it and say it's just for my own personal, doc, you know, stuff because I want to go back and watch what I've gone through. You know what I mean? Well, I'm supposed to be getting a new phone soon. So uh, maybe uh, I could do it with that. I'm hoping to get a new one, too. The one I'm using right now is an iPhone 13. Uh, good thing about the camera, I got 4K on it, so I got good quality, but I want I want a better one. And, uh, yeah, this one doesn't really work that well anymore. There, which one's that one? It's a 6S. Old school 6S. There you go. It's one of, it's one of them old phones. But a good one that you could try if you – I don't know what you're going to go for, but if you – you're going to go a little bit of brother's buying it for me. He's going to get me one of the newer ones. Uh, iPhone 12 or even the 13 is really good. With It's got a good 4K camera on it. So, um, But I, you could definitely use that. Um, but, yeah, dude, that's what I would do if I was you. I would, don't be afraid to ask questions when they're there. Because if they see that you're confident to ask them stuff and not be shy about it, and that's in anything in life, but even mostly in wrestling, since we're talking wrestling. If you do that in wrestling, they say, they will say, this kid knows what he's talking about. This kid knows his stuff. And they, mm -hmm. that will earn your, your respect more. They Or they would give you respect a whole lot more instantly. You know what I mean? That also yeah. develops your character and develops your reputation when it comes to the rest of the wrestling world. They could be like, hey, he's been working with us as a referee in TSW for about a year or two. And uh, he's just a good, he's he's a quick learner. He's fast. He's willing to do anything. And he asks questions and he, he's eager. You know, you're hungry. You want to, you want everything. Soak it all in like a sponge. If I was you, that's exactly what I do. I'd soak every single bit of it up. That's smarter than what I would have did. You're instantly saying, let me start as a referee so I can learn this. So I can get my foot in the door yeah. as a stepping stone. That's smart. Me, I would have been like, hey. I want to get in the ring, take some bumps, let's go. You know, like an issue. <laughs> <laughs> Screw the referee. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. Most people think they're ready to get into the ring, start taking bumps, but once they do it, they realize they're really not cut out for it. Yeah. 
So it, I, I think it, I think it's smart to start out as something in the wrestling business, but not a wrestler. Maybe like a referee, commentator, cameraman, whatever. Learn the business first, then invest in training. I got a friend who's about my age who really loves wrestling, and he's finally in the business, but he's not a wrestler. He knew it wasn't for him to do the wrestling, but he's a, a video recorder. Like he he camcord he he records the matches, but he yeah, also help he also helps with commentary. He's done refereeing. And he says he's happy just being there and being able to do all that because it's fun to him. And that might be a thing. Who knows? It might be like that for you. And I, I'm not misjudging you. You have your matches. But mm -hmm. you might start taking so many bumps to where you'd be like, damn, this, this is too much for me. I think I'd just like to stick to refereeing. And also, you already got a mouthpiece by talking trash and learning how to talk. You could be a hell of a manager. You never know. Oh, hell, hell yeah. You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with look at Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman's never been a wrestler. He's had what maybe a handful of matches in his career because it was part of the story, but he's not a wrestler. But he's yeah. he's with the he's with he's been with three of the biggest main eventers of all time: CM Punk when he was world Brock champion, Lesnar. Brock Lesnar, and now Roman Reigns. And he's he's getting paid millions of dollars just as much as they are because. He's a hell of a manager. And he, he knows what he's doing. It's the knowledge. Knowledge is yeah. power. And uh, I love to perform, though. And I've got the wrestling ability, I think. What do you think? You think I'm, I'm cut out for wrestling, or you think I should be a manager? <laughs> Your you personal opinion. You definitely know what you're doing in that ring, whether it's with a smaller opponent or an opponent who has a very similar style to you. You definitely know what you're doing. You are cut out. You are chiseled like a statue. <laughs> not chiseled, not yet. I'm almost. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, maybe not that. yet if that's how you want to put it. But, uh, but when it comes to moving in the ring, having that style that fans look for in a wrestler, kind of like that gritty, hardcore, just don't give a fuck attitude, that's you, 100%. If you, if, you, if you stepped in the pro tomorrow, as long as you kept doing what you do, fans would fall in love with you instantly. I really hope so, and I uh, appreciate that. I really do. See, I like to get other people's opinions. You know, I want them to be honest with me. I've had some people say, eh, nobody cares about you, James. Okay, well, I'm glad you're giving me that criticism because I'm going to prove you wrong. And then I do it. Just like before I got back into backyard wrestling in 2021, because I had a big break between then, and that's part of my backyard career. I started the promo wrestling game in 2020 on TikTok, and I had a guy tell me, who was the owner of a promo company, he hated me because he said, you're just a fake. You're a fraud. You have no... Because I didn't have my wrestling video matches on my YouTube yet. He's like, you don't know. I bet you've never been in a ring before. I bet you can't wrestle. You just... You're, you're full of it. You know, ain't got no proof. And you say you got all these years experience and blah, blah, blah. I said, okay. Okay. I'm going to show you. And then I did. And then he, he didn't say nothing else. He, he just stopped talking to me. <laughs> and everybody was just like, what? What happened, man? Why aren't you talking to him no more? He's just pretty The best you feeling wrong. in the world is shutting someone up. Yes, yes, yes. So there it is, man. Just do what you do. Um, that's all I go for, though, whenever I'm in the ring. I want to go out there to entertain. And uh, I like acting put that character mode on you know get out there and do a character so unfortunately like the, uh as i say over and over the dark messiah has not been seen in a wrestling ring before but i think that character just just the thought of it just like if you take the character itself the promos that i've done the fact that i'm more real and I go more into depth with things, that character has to be the best character I've ever had. There you go. And I but, love playing that character. 
to give you some connections, I implore you, I ain't begging you, <laughs> but to help you, you should mm -hmm. come and join the promo wrestling community. Join me and let me get you in there. You already know basically how to cut a promo. Let's yeah. give you, let's get you hooked up, meet some people. I'll guide you along the way and get you put into a promo wrestling match. Get you a character made for my game, which I'm sure you got 2K23, don't you? Yeah, I do. So, do you have a character made? What is it? Do you have a character made? Do you have your character made on there? I do, and he's uploaded to Community Creations. Uh, cool. I could have you send me the hashtags to that. And I can download them because PWF Accelerate is coming back from its mid-season finale. October 1st, we're going to be live in Toronto Skydome. Toronto, Ontario, Canada. This is all in character because, I mean, really, we're not going to be there. But the game's going to be there. And uh, <laughs> PWF Accelerate returns before over 30,000 fans. Got the new custom arena made and all of our characters. I can have you debut on that show. And uh, we'll talk. We'll talk. And it'd be fun. Have you seen any of my PWF shows before? I think I've seen a few of them, yes. Did you hear the commentary and everything? Yeah. Your personal opinion of it? Everybody's got custom music. Do you remember any of it? Great. Product is fantastic. Okay. I, I'd love to be a part of that, honestly. This right here will help you connect with more people. Make new Just hit me up on yeah, I'll hit Just you up. Me up on uh, Discord, and uh, I'll I'd, I'd be able to join that uh, promo company. Uh, I'd be able to join PWF. You know. Yeah. Definitely. All right, man. Well, I know you got. You probably want some more to talk about. I unfortunately need to go, but I'm glad you let me come on here as an honor. Come on here, and talk no with problem. you a little bit, and uh, stay connected. All right. See you, my man. See you. All right. Well, that was the TBW portion of the documentary. Um, I want to get into depth with Russell Cooper because I didn't mention he was kind of the main reason why I left. So Russell Cooper, when I first got there, he was OK. He seemed kind of friendly at first. But what shot down the opportunity of continuing to do business with him is not because of what he told me but because of how he reacted to a match that they recorded between Destroyer and uh, Grizzly for the tournament. The match that you saw ended up being the second match, and you could tell from the reactions on Destroyer and Grizzly as they were making their entrance, they did not want to have to record that match again. That match that you saw was a redo because Russell said that their first match was terrible, not TBW quality, and trash. This pissed off everybody, including people not named Destroyer and Grizzly, because they thought Russell's comments were unprofessional because Russell himself, at the timing of that, had little to no in-ring experience and also didn't know what he was doing. Meanwhile, Destroyer and Grizzly had had about almost two years of experience in WEF, yet Russell wants to shit on them, even though at that point he hasn't even had a good match in TBW. Hell, to this day, in my opinion, he hasn't had a good match in TBW. And... I can get all controversial if I want to. That's just me. People don't like me because I say a lot. That's just me. In my opinion, Russell, still to this day, has not had a good match in TBW. So the main reason I left TBW was because of him. My experience at TBW went okay. Uh, Russell is just the one who kind of shot down any opportunities of me coming back. Would I love to come back? Absolutely. Just as long as Russell was not in the same ring as me when I train. 
or he is not near the ring when I train. Because I do not then I do not need to hear his snarky mouth make rude comments to me, reminding me of me leaving. I don't want Russell near the ring. I don't want Russell in the ring when I'm training. Those are the only stipulations that I am going to come up with when it comes to me training in TBW. But after my TBW experience, we have the WEF Big Rumble. For those of you who follow me in my career, you will know the full story on that. Ended up Botching a suplex, it was botched on both ends. He jumped too early, and I fell back awkwardly. It was botched on both ends and ended up suffering a nasty head injury because of that. Um, even after the big rumble was recorded, they wanted to record a match between... Um, James Taylor, I believe I have you on Discord. Um, after we recorded the Big Rumble, they wanted me to do a match, a, a triple threat match between Anthony Steele and Lumberjack. And the winner would go on to face Destroyer for the Intercontinental Championship. I couldn't do the match because I suffered a nasty concussion earlier. So I told him, I don't think I can compete. My head is hurting like crazy. I I don't know. I think I suffered a concussion or something. Because when, because everybody knew that Toxic's knee hit my head. They just had no idea how bad it was. I could barely stand. I was losing my balance trying to stand. That's how bad it was. Which makes me think it probably was a concussion. So, uh, Anthony had to find a safe way to eliminate me because the original plan was he was supposed to gorilla press me over his, his head and toss me out. And if I hit the wall that the ring was in, if, if I hit the wall of the shelter that the ring was in, then I hit the wall. But uh, Anthony had to find a safe way. So what he did was he put me in a suplex position, lifted me up, set me over the top rope and just, uh, kind of hit me out. That was a safe way of eliminating me. It sucks that I suffered a concussion because right after that was my time away from WEF healing from injury. Oh my God, was that was that a time, man? Because yeah, we knew that WEF was going to be taking time off. Because of the winter months, it was going to be cold. It was going to be snowing. We really couldn't do shows. So they were going to take a three-month hiatus, not only for that, but because they were going to make a new outdoor ring. So that was three months away from WEF, plus the month that I took off for injury. So that was four months of me away from the ring. And at that time, that was miserable. I was depressed. I didn't really think of anything to do. I really couldn't do anything up to that point. Um, it, it was just hard for me, man. Uh, I, I was unable to participate in the strikeout episode after the Big Rumble. I was unable to participate in their Christmas brawl event that they had, the last event before 2022, it, it was just hard for me, man. Um, during that break, though, is where the animal, Alexander Kelly, came into play, because I figured I needed a change. I needed, I needed a change of gimmick, because don't get me wrong, the revolution was going well, but he was losing a lot. He's had been losing... Countless matches up to that point. He lost the match to uh, Destroyer. He lost the Big Rumble. He lost the... He lost his second match in the semifinals 
against Howard the Alien and Grizzly. He lost the match at TBW against Lumberjack. Alexander needed a change, in my opinion. So that's why the animal came into play. I figured I would use that injury and kind of saying, oh, toxic, flicked a switch in my head when his knee collided. Um, he kind of fused me and the Soul Taker together. Because at that time, Soul Taker was partnered up with me. And, you know, we're the same person, but two different entities, if you get that. Like, the Soul Taker is with the demon in the pits of hell. He is a demon. Um, and then me, I'm human. So, I, I kind of saw, like, his injury as kind of like, I kind of saw my injury as like us fusing together and that is what made the animal. And we were kind of like unseparable. You couldn't separate us because we were fused together. Um, well, March, 2022 WBF strikeout returns. The animal makes his debut and it was dead from the beginning. In my opinion, because the man behind Lumberjack and Swamp Man had probably the worst idea for my character ever. Um, like, don't get me wrong. The influence was my idea, just not the members that I wanted in it. The influence that I wanted to make was going to consist of myself as the leader, Chris Nitro, Jackal and Grizzly. And I feel like all four of us together would have absolutely dominated WEF. Especially since I've got Chris Nitro, Jackal, and Grizzly, some of the biggest, toughest dudes in WEF. We was going to be unstoppable. I was going to win the Macho Man Championship. Chris and Jackal would win the Tag Team Championships. And Grizzly would remain United States Champion. Those were my plans. But Elijah, the man behind Lumberjack and Swamp Man, said otherwise. He said, uh, we are going to have the influence consist of you, Toxic, and Swamp Man. And I was like, okay, Toxic's fine. I had doubts that uh, Swamp Man was going to work because Toxic was fine. I mean, Toxic, he, he, was, he was getting up there. Um... He was getting noticed, so I feel like him being in the influence, being under my wing, it would be perfect for him. Swamp Man, why? Like he was a he was a questionable choice. So um, I just kind of went with the flow and hoped that it would go somewhere. Allowing Swamp Man into the influence was probably the worst decision I could have ever made up to that point. Because my very first match as the animal was against Swamp Man. The very same episode, The Influence was born. And The Influence was born later on in that show in the main event. My match against Swamp Man, undoubtedly the worst match I've ever had in my backyard wrestling career. The match that I had with Swamp Man both times in 2021 and 2022 were both horrible in my opinion. Because of the guy behind the character, as I mentioned earlier. Um, so that was awful. Um, after that match, the main event was set to be Toxic versus Trent Crusher, which was set up earlier in the show with my talk show, The Animal's Cage, where I had Toxic as a special guest. Trenton came out, interrupted, and they just started wolfing the shit out of each other. So the main event was set between Toxic and Trent Crusher, and that is where the influence was born, because I came out with Toxic, as did Swamp Man, and no one knew what was going on until the closing moments of the match where me and Swamp Man distracted the ref. No, I distracted the ref, Swamp Man distracted Trent Crusher. No, how did it go? I know I distracted the ref. Swamp Man had the pizza box. And then Trenton was uh, distracted by me arguing with the ref. 
So that allowed Swamp Man to grab the pizza box and whack Trenton in the head with it. In story, there was supposed to be a brick in that pizza box, and that's what knocked Trenton Crusher out. Um, so the influence was born, and we were set to dominate WBF. But because of Elijah's stupid plans with my character, the animal was dead essentially as soon as he was born. So, yeah, the animal, a character I could have done a lot with, but Elijah just didn't want to. So, um, it was because of that that I took a mental health break because I was like, this isn't going well. Elijah's kind of giving me, you know, self-doubt. I got to do something. So I went and I took a break from WBF and I had no idea how long I'd be gone. I just kind of had to focus on myself and uh, kind of let it pass a little bit, kind of let them do it without me for like a week or two and see how that went. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, during my break, WBF shut down. And... When that happened, that hit me like a ton of bricks. And thinking about it hits me like a ton of bricks. It hurt because I worked so hard to help WEF behind the scenes. Um, and my company, RUW, only had one show up to that point and up to this point. At the time of recording, we only had one show and I didn't know what the hell I was going to do with RUW. I mean, Chris said, yeah, we're going, we're still going to keep the ring up. Just contact us if you need anything. So I did. And then that's where that shoot promo uh, last year was uploaded, where I discussed the fact that uh, none of the WEF wrestlers want to do shit because I had a tournament plan. I had a an anniversary show planned. Um, and no one wanted to do anything. So that also kind of hit me where it hurt because that showed me how much of the guys actually cared about RUW. And the only person that did was Chris Nitro. Tells you a lot. None, none of the WEF guys really cared about RUW with the exception of Chris Nitro. And that, that hurt. So, um, yeah, since WEF... When they had shut it down, they initially thought that they would just let a few months pass, see what happens with the guys, see who's all into it again, and then bring it back. Then comes January of 2023. WEF Strikeout was set to make a shocking return. No one in WEF expected them to even want to record another show. But they contacted all of us. We set a date, January 28th of 2023 we were set to go train and record another show and that is when the dark messiah would finally be unveiled in wef because he had existed since november of 2022 if i'm not mistaken and then it was january of 2023 and the dark messiah was set to reveal himself on wef well, we recorded the show. I had a match with Lumberjack that was actually pretty good. My only good match with Lumberjack ended up being the only match with Lumberjack that was never posted, with the exception of a welterweight championship match that was recorded in 2022 that was also not posted. Um, so the match that I had with Lumberjack, who was supposed to be going by the name of Daniel Hayes at that point, actually went pretty good. Um, I was set to throw a temper tantrum after the match and because of that get suspended and be written off TV. And then my return, I was set to uh, return with the Dark Disciples faction, which was supposed to consist of me, Grizzly, Trank Crusher, and Tranquilizer. That is right. Tranquilizer would no longer be a part of the influence and he would now be aligned with me. Um, those were the plans. And then... I was set to win the uh, United States Championship and basically be like the Roman Reigns of WBF. I was set to have a very long title reign. 
Um, I had the faction, and I was just going to be unstoppable as hell. And everything I just mentioned never happened. So WEF shutdown really hurts, even still, because WEF is kind of like where I got started in wrestling, and it'll it'll always have a soft spot in my heart. Um, I do thank the WEF crew for allowing me to do what I've always wanted to do. And, uh, the career of Alexander Kelly is not over yet. Unfortunately, the show that we recorded January 28th was never posted. It is September 5th. No, it is September 17th of 2023. And that show still has never been posted, and it never will. So when WE, so when WEF shut down in 2022, that was the last time you ever saw WEF. And they have no interest in bringing it back. I hope that changes, but from the looks of things, it's not gonna. Which is a damn shame. So, yeah, what's next for Alexander Kelly? I wish I knew. I'm hoping to go into TSW, the company that I talked about with James Taylor just a little bit ago. I'm hoping to referee for that one and then kind of... I don't know how long I want to ref before going into pro. I want to ref, get paid for that, and then save up a lot of money to go into pro if I have to pay for that with TSW since I'm a ref. Um, that is what I'm hoping is the next step for Alexander kelly but um i also have interest in going to tbw so if i go there there's that um but yeah that was kind of the alexander kelly documentary what made alexander kelly the story of alexander souls transforming into alexander kelly um kind of how alexander started out and just pretty much his story in backyard wrestling so thank you for tuning into this stream if you did. To anyone watching, if you want to leave a comment, ask any questions about my backyard wrestling career, feel free, please. I am here to answer any questions you all may have. Um, I know a lot of people have questions about my backyard wrestling career. I'm happy to answer any question about my backyard wrestling career. Just ask anything if you have any questions. I will give you time. To do that. But in the meantime, before I close out this stream and respond to any questions that anyone may have, please check out the RUW Instagram that you are seeing on your screen right now at RUW Wrestling. Go follow me on Instagram, which you are seeing on your screen right now, at official Alexander Kelly. You can go check out the official RUW website by typing this into your web browser, realundisputedwrestling.home.blog. It will bring you to the official Real Undisputed Wrestling, the official Real Undisputed Wrestling website created by me. Um, you can read about all the stars. You can check out information about the shows, and it'll, and at the bottom it'll. Uh, link you to our social medias just click the social media logo and it'll bring you straight to it so um yeah any questions in the comments no no questions so far i'll give you like another minute to ask any questions you may have um This isn't about your backyard. Uh, a question from Parker Teague. This isn't about your backyard wrestling career, but do you have any advice on how to play a character? Yes. If you have a character in mind, know how to do it. You have to have plans for the character. Before you debut a character, wherever, you have to have the plans to play the character. The Dark Messiah was a character that I had planned since 2021, but I didn't actually bring him out until late 2022 because I had to keep coming up with plans. I had to get the attire, get the gimmick, get the hair, 
um, because I feel like my long black hair really, really suits the Dark Messiah gimmick. You have to know how to play the character because uh, there was a gimmick that I had planned in, I want to say late 2020, early 2021, where I would kind of bring my gaming side to RUW, but I realized I didn't really know how to play the character. It would be lame and no one would like it. So I never introduced it. You have to know how to play the character before you play the character. Uh, work on promos, work on facial expressions, have that attitude that you want that character to have. Even outside of wrestling, maintain the same characteristics of your character. If you've ever heard of a wrestler named Maxwell Jacob Friedman, MJF, in interviews, in stuff outside of wrestling, he maintains the same characteristics of the character that he has in wrestling, in AEW. Um, that doesn't mean to be exactly like your character, because if your character is like an asshole, maybe don't be an asshole outside of the ring. But it is a good way to draw in good heat, I will say that. Just have the same characteristics of your character. Know how to play the character, have the characteristics of the character, have the gear, uh, practice promos, practice facial expressions, get that attitude that you want your character to have. That is the advice on how to play a character. Uh, anyone else have any other questions? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll be right back in just a minute. My mom's on. All right, I'm back. Any other questions that you have, whether it be on Backyard Wrestling, on advice that you want me to give, um, just anything at all? Tom, do not disturb on. Okay. I'll give it like another minute or so. Any other questions at all? The question. Well, that just about does it for the Alexander Kelly documentary. If anybody wants me to reveal anything about my backyard wrestling career that I haven't really gotten into depth with, uh, either leave a comment on this video or message me on my Instagram. 
and I will be sure to answer any questions that you may have or go into depth with anything that um, I have yet to get in, de in really in depth with. So um, if y'all have any other questions, please feel free to ask. Whether it be about my backyard wrestling career, advice, anything like that, before I end the stream, I'll give y'all a minute. So far, no questions just yet. Ow. Um. All right, uh, no other questions in the stream right now. Uh, leave a comment if you do have any questions. Uh, this has been it for the official Alexander Kelly documentary live with Alexander Kelly, and I will catch y'all in the next one. Deuces.